from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Merrily Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington. It's the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic a losing bet, gambling addiction. We're going to talk about help for those who cannot control their casino and online compulsions. And my guest today to talk about that with us is Mr. Keith White. He is the executive director of the Washington, D.C.-based National Council for Problem Gambling. Thanks for being here again. Oh, thank you so much for having me back. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Name one thing that can cause disruptions in every area of your life. Psychological, physical, social, vocational devastation. Well, that's what addictive gambling leads to for far too many people. And today on Eye on Washington, we'll look at the problem of gambling addiction in Nevada and nationally. We'll learn about the warning signs loved ones can look for. And we'll give you the resources you need to treat and heal from your addictive behavior. According to my guest organization, approximately 2 to 3 percent of Americans meet the criteria for problem gambling. Now, that might not sound like a big deal until you consider that that works out to about 6 million adults and half a million teens. And Nevada, which shares the top spot with New Jersey, has more than double the national rate of addicts. Approximately 6.4 percent of state residents overdo it in the casino and on internet gambling sites. While Nevada and New Jersey ranking high might not be a big surprise given their residents' easy access to both brick and mortar and online casinos, it might interest you to know that South Dakota ranks second. Riverboat casino heavy Mississippi is third, followed by Montana and Oklahoma in fourth and fifth place. The reason gambling addiction is worthy of this show's focus is because of its very harmful effects. My guest group says that these include the annual cost in crime and bankruptcy, and that's of 17 billion with a B dollars, major depressive disorder, which reportedly affects 76 percent of those addicted, higher risk for a number of other behaviors like tobacco and drug use. And um, Mr. White, you know, other studies cite the connection between uh, a problem gambling and these, spousal and child abuse, the yes. commission of crime to fund the activity, the high rate of incarceration among addicts, and the most serious and irrevocable of, irrevocable of all, and that's suicide. Tell us about this. Well, we know that this is a disorder that often baffles people because we're used to thinking about addiction in terms of a substance. And so, you know, a lot of people are familiar with too much alcohol can cause me to um, have all sorts of bad, bad consequences, too many drugs. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that gambling can have those same impacts on the brain. And mm. so when you look at some of the consequences, it's not surprising that people who uh, gamble too much also have high rates of other problems, as you say, but they can also uh, do things like there's 70% of people with uh, severe gambling problems report committing a crime to finance their gambling. You know, we're going to detail later in the show who's yeah. most at risk and, and how to get help if you or a loved one struggles. But I thought we should take a moment here to let you tell our audience the basic definition of problem gambling. What is it? Sure. Well, because most of us gamble and most of us fortunately are able to do so without harm, but there are risk factors. And so when you think about um, motivation to gamble, if you're gambling for recreation, um, that's probably a protective factor. If you're gambling to pay the rent, if you're gambling because mm. you, you, know, you need to win money uh, right now, that's a risk factor for gambling addiction. I found it interesting that top-ranked Nevada doesn't have a higher ranking for treatment of the problem. You know, I, I read it's number 12 in the nation for treatment. And, and if you compare that with, say, Hawaii, which is 27th for the problem, but number three for treatment, um, I guess national groups like yours help fill the gap somewhat. Um, you have uh, unbelievable resources available on yeah. your site. Uh, and you can direct people to local counseling, yes. et cetera. But it seems like a lot more local help is needed. Absolutely, and there's, there's a great opportunity for partnership. So uh, public funding is important to create that safety net. And, and Nevada has only come fairly recently to public funding. And of course, with any type of public funding, there's always the risk of, be, of, of that being cut. So we really rely uh, most heavily on 
partnerships, private partnerships with, for example, the gaming industry, mm -hmm. with healthcare providers, financial providers. Uh, but the gaming industry can play an enormously helpful role, and a lot of our model is to work directly with them. And we should mention the Nevada gaming industry, the entire industry is very supportive of your group and, uh, and more than devoted to helping solve this problem. You know, quickly, I, I, I mentioned that about 6.5 million people mm -hmm. nationwide struggle with this. Nevada, New Jersey, Mississippi, Maryland, the, you know, they have easy access to casinos, but was the need for treatment so great nationally before online casinos? Well, we think it certainly is spiking now. We're, we're in the midst of the nation's largest and fast, fastest expansion of gambling in our history, and so there's going to be a lot more need for treatment across the country. In Nevada, quite frankly, the model was always bring your money, you know, bring your money in home, uh, bring your money here, but take your problems back home. Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing a lot more domestic gambling, and so there's there's a sure. bigger need for treatment in in the Silver State. Okay, when we return college and compulsion. Studies say addictive gambling is prevalent on campus. We're going to give you the details right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, NV Energy, Jim Marsh Automotive and Body Shop, the Rogich Communications Group, and Renown Health. I have three tests next week. I'm going to be studying all weekend. Oh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until 6. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. Many things in a mother's life affect her pregnancy. You can help improve the health of mothers and babies in Nevada by completing a Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System, or PRAMS, survey from the Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The survey asks new moms about their experience before, during, and after pregnancy. Responses are confidential. If you receive a PRAMS survey, please share your story. I got some Oxy after I hurt my neck. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us, too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of gambling addiction and how to treat it. My guest today is Mr. Keith White. He's the executive director of the National Council of Problem Gambling. According to Casino.org, gambling addiction is an impulse control disorder, similar to, say, pyromania. The, pro, uh, the person compulsively performs the activity and cannot stop even when they realize it's hurting them or their loved ones. That compulsion equals big money for the industry. Casino.org says more than $500 billion was spent in annual wagers by addicts. We mentioned earlier the growth of the online betting industry. In fact, in 2013, a Morgan Stanley study predicted that by this year, online betting will be worth $9.3 billion, and that a lot of this money is going to online betting sites alone. And the fastest growing online gambling group? It's college students. A University of Connecticut study found that 23% of college students had gambled online. 6.3% did so weekly. Of the group that gambled frequently, 
61% were pathological gamblers, compared with only 5% of non-internet gamblers. Meanwhile, the National Center for Responsible Gaming says the overall number of college gamblers is much higher than 23%, saying that 75% gamble each year when you include the lottery, card games, small stakes games, and sports. And Mr. White, your group says uh, a number of states allow children under 18 to gamble, and the Mayo Clinic says that gambling during childhood or teenage years increases the risk of developing the compulsive gambling that we're talking about today. It's incredible in this day and age that many states allow minors to purchase, uh, play, or even redeem lottery tickets. And so this is actually state government. Nevada, in some ways, may be a little bit safer by not having a state lottery. You know, I, I mentioned the addiction is related to impulse control. I was interested to read uh, that part of the draw might be found in biology. The brain image uh, shows a neurological response similar to how a cocaine addict responds uh, after a dose of coke. So impulse control is harder to master the younger you are as well. So that yes. might uh, affect these college students as well. Absolutely. Uh, so we know that uh, a lot of uh, gambling addiction is driven by your own biology, by your own, uh, by your own genes. You know, so about 30 to 40 percent of the risk comes from your family history. Hmm. Uh, so it's not just willpower. It's not just someone who's greedy. It's not just someone who's immoral. It's someone who is in the grip of, of a real medical sure. disorder. With the rapid spread of the online betting sites, like yes. we discussed earlier, it, it's, it's hard to imagine for adults, college students, children, that these numbers are going to go down anytime soon. We think we're looking at a big uh, increase in, in gambling, especially uh, betting on sports, which primarily was restricted to Nevada um, after the May 2018 Supreme Court ruling. Now, each state is free to legalize sports betting if they choose. Uh, I think we're already up to about 20 right now. And I think in the next couple years, you'll really see the majority of states with legalized sports betting, which is obviously very, very attractive to younger and college students. Well, it's horrible news for groups like your state to think that numbers are going up. What, what, are, what are some things your folks focused on to help turn those numbers around and, and what are you working with with our, our, our delegation and mm -hmm. the federal government in general to kind of turn things around? Well first we're calling for a, a basic safety net. So we're calling for some of the federal tax revenue from the uh, withholding tax on gambling winnings and the excise tax on sports wagering that combined brought in almost eight billion dollars to the federal government last year. Uh, we're calling on a percentage of that to be returned to states and to groups like ours to do the prevention and treatment. And we've been really fortunate to be able to work directly directly with the delegation. Uh, they've been very supportive of our bills uh, on um, preventing gambling addiction among military and veterans. Mm. Obviously, Nevada's got a very high population, and uh, they, may be at ex they may be at additional risk for gambling problems because of the nature of their work. Does that have pretty much uh, bipartisan and uh, Congress-wide support? And if people are against uh, such programs, why, why would that be so? We like to think this is about the last bipartisan issue. So we've had tremendous support on both sides of the aisle. Uh, it's just really been a matter of trying to get Congress, trying to get Funny. the gears in, of, yeah. in Congress to, to move. So no one's opposed any of this legislation. It's just uh, we've not been able to, to get the process uh, to, to work. You know, I saw on a National uh, Center for Responsible Gaming that, that, mm -hmm. that you've launched a collegegambling.org. And I know your group is very focused right now on this group. What, what are the colleges themselves doing to help? Well, one of the calls for, for this, this project is to have colleges uh, create their own gambling policies. There's still mm. a, a minority of colleges who don't have a formal policy on gambling. And from that then flows making sure student health educators have gambling prevention resources, you know, making sure there's somewhere for kids to go if they do get into a problem. And again, uh, the parents play a role in this too, right? You, you, uh, yes. your, your site mentions that uh, parental attitudes and behavior play a big role in uh, whether a child might develop gambling addiction. That's right. And if they see it as, again, as, as recreation, set a limit of time and money you spend gambling, stick to it. If you've been raised with that ethos versus, uh, you know, when the rent's due, uh, dad goes out and, and tries to hit, you know, tries to hit 21 or tries sure. to buy a lottery ticket. Um, you know, and you can look at the same parental attitudes towards substance abuse and other risky behavior. Mm -hmm. Gambling tracks with those as well. When we return, are you or a loved one addicted to gambling? We're going to have the gambling addiction quiz for you. It's coming up next. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. 
Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, the only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. When you think RTC, what comes to mind? How about jobs? RTC road projects bring thousands of jobs to Washoe County, expanding and connecting Northern Nevada, growing our local economy, providing the more secure future for our residents and their families. So when you think jobs, think RTC. Your RTC, the RTC of Washoe County. There is no known safe amount of marijuana used during pregnancy. Everything a mother eats, drinks, or smokes affects her developing baby or enters her breast milk. Just like alcohol and tobacco, using marijuana can have negative effects on your baby. Using any form of marijuana may be harmful to your baby during pregnancy. And while breastfeeding, marijuana can affect your ability to care for your baby or someone else's baby. If you're pregnant or a new mother and using marijuana, you are urged to quit. Visit SoberMomsHealthyBabies.org or call 211. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. This is a storm drain. It collects stormwater. Grass clippings, fertilizer, yard waste, they all contaminate our stormwater. Litter, pet waste, they also contaminate it. Fluids from leaking vehicles run right in there. All stormwater goes untreated directly to our local waterways. Keep contaminants out of our storm drains and out of our waters. Join us in preserving Nevada's waters for future generations. Visit loveandbewaters.com. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of gambling addiction and what's being done to treat it. We've been visiting with Mr. Keith White. He's the executive director of the National Council Problem Gambling. Well, if you're watching today and think you might need help, we are here to help you. Let's find out if you're addicted to gambling and if so, what treatment is available to you. If you are addicted, you fit most or all of the following. You think constantly about gambling. You feel the need to increase bets to sustain the thrill. You feel agitated when you try to cut back. You use the activity to escape from problems or to reduce anxiety. You chase your losses. You jeopardize your relationships to gamble. You rely on bailouts from others to meet debts and you fail in efforts to control it or to stop. And Mr. White, the quiz says that the addict might go as far as to finance bets through illegal acts. Is yes. that true? Roughly 70% of gamblers commit a white collar crime to finance their gambling. Wow, that is so funny. Because money is the substance they abuse in some ways. Oh, talk about that. Well, so uh, you, you need money to gamble, although you can certainly gamble on credit, but that's what keeps the addict in action. And what a gambling addict really wants is, is to continue to keep betting over and over again. You know, they, they get into that flow, uh, that preoccupation, that obsession, that loss of control. And so you need money to feed that. And they also develop tolerance. So you need more and more money, bigger and bigger bets. So we're to talking theft, we're talking sale. robbery, we're talking. Yeah, they, they tend not to knock people over the head, but it is, is financial crimes to help finance their gambling. So someone watching or listening right now thinking, wow, this is me. Yeah. Um, uh, how can that person get help both right now and long term? What's their first step and, and what does your organization do to help? Well, the first step to know is that it is treatable. And so it's not just a one-way path. So that's the most important um, thing to know is that there's hope and help available. 
Our Nevada chapter, the Nevada Council on Problem Gambling, provides a 24-hour helpline, and I know you'll have that at the end of the show. But um, the second most important thing to do is to reach out. Reach out to someone you love, reach out to a helpline, a friend, a member of the faith community. Talk to someone, because once you share that, once you admit that you may have a problem and you share it with another person, sure. you're on your first step to recovery. Do you find that in, um with gambling addiction, like uh, other, I, I've covered uh, different types of addictions on this show, and, and uh, a lot of them, the person self isolates. So yes. when you say the the big thing, because there's some shame and there's fear, of course, um, and you know if you've lost your family yeah. and and your job or what have you. It's that initial reaching out, isn't it? Absolutely, it's admitting to someone else um, that you've lost control. And the first, one of the first steps in Gamblers Anonymous, which is an anonymous self-help group like AA and others, is to admit that you're powerless, but that you can restore yourself to a better way of thinking. So there's definitely hope and help available. You know, we talked about the psychological aspect, and you and I talked off camera that, that there's not really a, uh, uh, a specific type of treatment for Correct. gambling addiction, but we should revisit the idea that treatment centers in general and treatment for this, and as you said, f enough funding to help with this, which your group is trying to do through federal and state legislation, et cetera, it is lacking and it is needed. Um, how do we get uh, more support on the Hill for, for these types of things? Well, there is a gap in the safety net, but it's important to note that, yeah, many of the treatments that we use for other addictions are going to work for people with gambling problems. You know, it's, 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 a, it's changing your way of thinking, accepting that character change, and living a life in, in recovery. Uh, so it's entirely possible. We know most people who seek treatment uh, improve. And so one of the things to do is to take that evidence to the, to the Capitol Hill and to say, look, let's make sure that there's not, we don't have barriers in place. Mm -hmm. And right now there's a lot of barriers for people with gambling problems that people with other addictions don't have to face. And so we're focused on knocking those down at the federal level. So you mentioned um, the people who do get treatment, they do see a lot of success? Yes, roughly 70% of people who either um, stick with Gamblers Anonymous or who go through at least six sessions of uh, outpatient therapy, about, about two thirds uh, of them either have stopped their gambling completely or have reduced it to not. Is it like alcoholism? Uh, once you're a gambling addict, are you always, a, you, you, do you stay, uh, ga the alcohol uh, addict stays out of the bar? Right. Do you stay out of the casino? The are you going to pick it up again? Well, there's a lot of risk there. So there's different theories on whether or not it is. Because if it's a brain thing, as we discussed, right? Right. And so people that have that biological predisposition are well advised that if, even if they stop now, not to go back and test themselves. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot like alcoholism. Everybody has an individual perspective with this, and a tolerance, but right. once you've had a problem, you're at much, much greater risk for relapse and for developing You're not going to be the person who it's going to go back to just being recreational? Likely not. Okay. Yeah. And when we return, so just what is the National Council of Problem Gambling? What's their top federal focus? Let's find out from my guest right after this. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. Unsafe sleep conditions cause serious injury and even death to infants. Never sleep with your baby on a sofa, in a chair, or in an adult bed. Protect the baby you love from becoming a tragic statistic. The only safe place for your baby to sleep is alone, on its back, in a crib, and in your room. For more information, visit cribsforkids.org. That's cribsforkids.org. Even when you prepare, life doesn't always go as planned. Today, one in seven seniors live in poverty. To learn how you can help, visit aarpfoundation.org. 
Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. And we are back with our closing segment of today's show on gambling addiction, what's being done to treat it. And we've been visiting with Mr. Keith White. He's the executive director of the National Council for Problem Gambling. So just what is my guest organization and what is it doing to help gambling addicts? The NCPG is focused on increasing public awareness to problem gambling and increasing accessibility to and the quality of problem gambling services. On the federal and state levels, they work to integrate problem gambling into federal federal policy and to serve as a resource for state affiliates and agencies. Mr. White, what's your top uh, federal priority for 2020 and how's the Nevada delegation involved in supporting your goals? They've been incredibly helpful because our goal is to bring back some of that tax revenue that leaves Nevada and goes to the goes to Washington, D.C., bring it back home to the state to help fund those gambling treatment centers. Excellent. You know, I want our statewide uh, viewers and listeners to be able to uh, reach you. So let me give you the, them your website and phone number. It is ncpgambling.org. Note that there's just one G, ncpgambling.org. Their phone number is 800-522-4700. Again, 800-522-4700. Their Nevada affiliate is based in Las Vegas, uh, online at nevadacouncil.org. Reno's is not affiliated, but offers the same type of treatment. You can check out Reno pgc.org. Um, and uh, Mr. White, again, what can a person who is afraid to reach out, there is some stigma around this. What do you say to that Nevadan who took the quiz and says, that's me, but I'm a little nervous to reach out for help? Well, there's hope and help available, and there's a lot of people that can help take you the rest of the way. The most important step is that first one you take. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. And one more time, if you need help, ncpgambling.org, nevadacouncil.org, renopgc.org. And again, thanks for being here. I hope your being here has helped a lot of Nevadans today. Me Obviously, too. a lot of people need some help. Thank you. That does wrap up today's Eye on Washington. For more federal news Nevadans care about, you can go to our website, joycecommunications.com. And while you're there, like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter catch up with any shows you may have missed on our YouTube page. Thanks so much for joining us on today's Eye on Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a good day. Thank you for watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce airs statewide in Nevada solely due to the generosity of our sponsors. Can your company help us continue our mission to remain Nevada's top source of federal news? If you can help us help Nevadans, please visit JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW Sponsors and join us today. That's JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW Sponsors. Sponsors.